look at this. This happens every day. Constantly fighting. Yeah, so go. What's up, people? This is April from Sea Nerd, and this week we are going to talk about fish and chicks. And by chicks, I mean birds, because there are a lot of them here. And they're very vocal, as you can tell. Um, anyway, I spent a lot of my time photographing and videoing these guys and pretty much just watching them all day because I've pretty much exhausted all the other animal species here. But these guys are really fascinating and um, I'm going to show you a quick little video about, about why I think they're so cool and uh, yeah, what they spend their days getting into. So alright, let's go! Ah, such a sweet serene moment for this otherwise very vocal species. This is the Hartlip skull which is found on the Atlantic coast of South Africa up to Namibia. They are omnivorous, and I constantly see them foraging for food here on the coastline, mainly crabs and mussels and whatever they can get their beaks on. As you witnessed earlier, the species of gull is quite talkative, and they communicate, or argue, however you want to call it, with each other at all hours of the day, but particularly in the morning when you're trying to sleep. They are commonly seen hanging out in small groups, but nest in colonies like the one located here on Robin Island, and then they come to the mainland to get food for their chicks. These gulls are mainly white with gray backs and black wingtips. And I like these guys because they're pretty feisty and they're always like pretty fun to watch. Not to mention they photograph really well. Another larger species of gull found here is the kelp or cape gull. Adults are white on the underside and head with black backs and a distinct red tip on their beak. While the juveniles are mottled gray and black with dark beaks and a white tail with a black band. They take about three years to mature to where they actually begin to look like the adults. These gulls are found in the southern hemisphere and are opportunistic omnivores. Here at the marina I see them eating mostly crabs, but they have a very sharp beak and can prey upon live animals such as whales and seal pups and are sometimes considered to be pests. This one drug himself onto the docks one day after a storm and couldn't really recover. I thought the storm had taken its toll, but a friend of mine said that the missing plumage from his tail area was most likely from a seal, a cape fur seal, attacking the fatty part of the bird. I'm considering it may be some payback for eating his kids. We actually called Wildlife Rescue out to come and get this guy, and uh, they got him and took him away, so he may have recovered, or he may not have, but either way, he didn't have to suffer for the rest of the day. The tide came in, and it was really cold that night, so it would have been a rough, rough evening for him for sure. And last we have the cormorants, which are my favorite. There are five different species here in South Africa, of which I have seen three, actually four, but three have photographed. Uh, the crown cormorant with sleek black plumage and red eyes, the cape cormorant, which has gorgeous teal eyes and a deep yellow beak and black feathers, and then the white-breasted cormorant, which is the biggest, also known as the great cormorant in the northern hemisphere. The one thing these birds all have in common is that they love to dive as you can see from here. These birds dive for their food and it is said that their feathers lack the regular waterproofing that other birds have so as to help them sink or stay down longer when they dive. They're extremely efficient hunters and catch a meal on average of one out of mm. three attempts, at least for all the hours that I've watched them. Chinese fishermen have actually raised and trained cormorants to fish for them by tying a string around their neck which disallows them from swallowing their catch and then only untying it after the seventh fish to allow them their own meal. Luckily, these guys here don't have to share. And what are they hunting? Clipfish, or any other small midwater schooling fish. Pilchards, anchovies, sardines, etc. There are many different types of clipfish along the South African coast, but this one is my favorite. It is called the speckled clipfish. And like the others, it can be found residing in tide pools or intertidal zones up to 30 meters. The juveniles resemble the adults in coloration and remain cautious until fully grown and even then they need to watch out because like I said, these cormorants have no problem catching them. Clipfish won't venture out into open water over sand for this reason and spend their time in crevices and in and around different substrates to gain the advantage. This one is fun to watch because he always comes charging at me and likes to hide in front of the camera, usually ruining the shot because it gets way too close. These guys are territorial and will pick an area to reside in and defend for a period of time. I can always find this guy in the same spot right in front of the boat. And when it's all said and done and the cormorant has had her fill, she pulls herself out of the water to dry her feathers in the sun. This being the most identifying characteristic about these particular birds. And one that I find really cool.
Hey again. Uh, so yeah, another day at the marina. I'm still here for the meantime. Uh, that's gonna change soon, off to warmer destinations and hopefully some more animals. So yeah, I really enjoy watching these guys here and I hope that you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you want, you can follow uh, CNerd on Patreon and support my work there or YouTube and Facebook. And uh, yeah, till next time, catch you later. Bye. Ah, just wish you'd stop talking. All I want to do is stand on this wall. Oh, that's just great. Did you see me standing here, man? You like totally...